when the Buddha gave a summary of his teachings to the arahants that he was going to send out to teach at the beginning of his career. He began with the word kanti, endurance. It's an important part of the path, learning how to endure things that you ordinarily wouldn't endure, pain, heat, cold, unfriendly words. You have to make sure your mind is not affected by these things. A monk I know who's a student of John Cha tells the story of how one day he was coming back from the alms round. One of the other monks was gossiping about some of the other monks in the monastery and put the first monk into a bad mood. He tried to get away from the second monk. But then she came back to the monastery and happened to run into a John Cha, and John Cha said, Good morning in English. And his mood flipped 180 degrees. And that night, as he was giving a foot massage to John Cha, and John Cha took his other foot and stamped him in the chest and said, Don't ever let your mind be affected by the words of others. And as the monk said, he has remembered that blessing up to this day. That's one of the things you have to deal with is people's words. Other of course is the the weather. Pains in the body. And the trick is not just to endure, but to use your discernment to make the endurance light, so it's not a heavy burden. Because if you just grit your teeth, then it gets harder and harder and harder. But if you learn how to give the mind some way of focusing on things that are actually good, then you can endure a lot of things that you wouldn't have endured otherwise. Like right now, you've got your breath. You can breathe in a way that feels good, trying to find the spots in the body that are most sensitive to how the breathing feels, and nourish them, please them, figure out what they would really like to feel and provide that. And then think of that sensation then spreading throughout the body, so that the pleasant sensation fills the whole body, fills the whole mind. There's that old saying that the devil makes work for idle hands. Wouldn't your defilements make work for idle minds? Give the mind work to do. It's something good. And you find you can endure a lot of things. If the mind is filled with a sense of the breath, then it doesn't have any idle hands to grab onto other things. Or it's filled with contemplation of something that's been bothering you, and you can you're beginning to see clearly what's the, what the problem is. And your mind doesn't have any idle hands to grab onto how difficult it is to be with the heat, how long the heat has been going on, how much longer it's going to go on. It's because we grab hold of the wrong things and stab ourselves with them. That's why we find that endurance is hard. It would be kind of made a lot easier if you use your discernment. You've probably noticed it. You sit and meditate for an hour, and you can focus on the pains here and the pains there, and they really consume your awareness. You can sit for that same hour and watch a movie, and the pains of sitting still don't bother you, because you're occupied with the movie. Well, occupy the mind with something else beside what's bothering you. And you might say, well, I'm running, running away from the problem. No, you're actually giving the mind something better to do. So it gains insight. When it turns around and looks at the problem, again, you can see the problem. It's not as big as you thought it was, not as difficult as you thought it was. If it was just pure endurance that made us awaken, them, the chickens would have gotten there a long time ago. The water buffaloes would have gotten there a long time ago. We need to use our discernment as well. That's how we teach ourselves how not to suffer.